Shishi Today's Srimad Bhagavatam class speaker was initiated by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada 52 years ago. He was one of the first 100 disciples of Srila Prabhupada. He was one of the first to go preaching in universities. He started the temple in Berkeley, California in 1969. And now he is situated for part of his time in Punjabi Bagh, which is a suburb of Delhi, although he does still travel all around Asia and India. His Holiness, Bhakti Majurya Govinda Swami. Jai, jai, jai. Do you want another garland? Okay. There you go. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. You see, this is a lot of garlands. But garlands are a uh, paraphernalia that are worn by devotees in the spiritual world also. Translator not coming? Okay. So, uh, this is spiritual. Some devotees, if you hand them a garlic, they throw it away. This is not very pukka, not very first class. Why? <laughs> I guess you should not go to a spiritual world because there you have to wear a garland. Of course. Yes. What do you do with your garland when it goes away? When I go when I leave my body? <laughs> what do you do with the garland once it gets old? Well, uh, most temples have a sacred trash. In my in, in Radhamadava temple here it's under the stairs in the back there. Or uh, you know, can you can put it in a tree, sometimes they're put in trees. Sometimes they are put in bushes, whatever. There's some trees that are covered with old garlands, you know. Uh, so it's discretional. Okay. So, um, are you ready to have some fun? Yes, yes? no? Yes. So let's say the Guru Parapara Params, please. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pasaya Bhutale Shimate Bhaktivedanta Shamaniti Namane Namaste Sarasvati Devi Gauravane Pracharane Devi Sesha Shanyavari Paskadya Desitarane Om Aginati Mirindasya Gina Gina Shalakaya Chaksuan Minatam Gina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Shri Taitanya Manubhistam Stapatam Gina Bhutale 
स्वयं रूपा कलात्मय धरते स्वापलते हम पंदे हम श्री गुरु श्री जिता पर कवल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्री रूपा स्वागतता सागर गुरुता सदैव साधवाइता सावृता परजन सहिता श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्रीराधा कृष्ण बरान सागर ललिता श्री विशुका नितम हे कृष्ण करुण सिंधु दीन बांधु जिगपते कोपेश कोपेशमोष्ठते तप्तकर गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सूर्यदेवी वृंदावरी पंचकौकृपृपिंदुवच पतिता पावने वैष्णवे जय श्रीकृष्णचैतन्य प्रभुनंद श्री अद्वैत गिरधर शिवश्री गौरवाकृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो आई विल गेट टू द वर्स इन अ मिनट द फर्स्ट थिंग वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड इज एन्जॉयिंग श्रवणम कीर्तनम विष्णु कृष्णा दैट इंक्लूड्स डिवोशनल सर्विस श्लोकस कीर्तन एवरीथिंग्स इन द श्रवणम कीर्तनम कैटेगरी दैट हैज टू डू with krishna's devotees and devotional service all shravanam kirtanam so unless we enjoy shravanam kirtanam well we must try to enjoy something material now i'll tell you a funny short story <coughs> in that regards about 25 years ago there was a brahmachari who was living in the temple then one day he was just immensely huge hugely covered over by tamagon and rajagon so He wandered. I don't know. He probably changed into karmi clothes. He wandered out of his, out of the temple and decided he'd go to a discotheque. That's a pretty big shift from the temple and duties to a discotheque. But he did it, you know. So he comes in a discotheque and then he's shocked. Why? Because it was a topless discotheque, you know, topless dancers. Because one of the topless dancers was a blooped Brahmacharini. Yes, you heard me. She was a blue bra- brahmachari. She looked at they recognized each other immediately. She says, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> He said to her, "What are you doing here?" I don't know. Maybe they got happily married and lived happily ever after, but I I don't know. But anyways, you see, that's what happens if we don't relish shravanam kirtanam. And we must go to the material this law of nature. We must go to the material. But I'm just in about the, the higher taste we must go there so now uh there are two verses for today starting with 91 shri shuku vacha but 92 is what's on the board shri shuku vacha ekada grihada sisu yashoda nanda gehini karmantara niyukta su nimanta swayam datadi then today's verse beginning yani right yeah. hmm yes yani yani ha gritani yani yani ha gritani tad bala charitani cha yadi nirmantanai kale smaranti tanyagayata yani yani ha gitani tad bala charitani cha dadi nirmantane kale smaranti tanyagayata yani yani ha gitani tad bala charitani cha dadi nirmantane kale smaranti tanyagayata next Tadi nirman tane kale
वैष्णवीस Translation. Shri Shugadeva Goswami continued, One day when Mother Yashoda saw that all the other maidservants were engaged in other household affairs, she personally began to churn the yogurt. While churning, she remembered the childish activities of Krishna, and in her own way, she composed songs and enjoyed singing to herself about all those activities. Please repeat. She should go go swami continue. One day when Mother Yashoda saw that all the maidservants were engaged in other duties. Louder. She personally began to churn the yogurt. While churning, she remembered the childish activities of Krishna. And in her own way, she composed songs and enjoyed singing to herself about all those activities. Purpurpa Siddha Prabhupada. Siddha Prabhupada Ki Jai. Siddha Vishwanath Tarikavadi Thakur, quoting from the Vaishnava Toshini of Siddha Sanatan Goswami, says that all the incident of Krishna's breaking the power of yogurt and being bound by Mother Yashoda took place on the Deepawali day or Deepamalika. Even today in India, this festival is generally celebrated very gorgeously in the month of Kartik by fireworks and lights, especially in Mumbai. It is to be understood that among all the cows of Dada Maharaj, several of Mother Yashoda's cows ate only grasses so favorable that the grasses would automatically flavor the milk. So if the, if the cows eat something bitter, the milk will be bitter. If they eat something sweet, it'll be sweet. Mother Yashoda wanted to collect the milk from these cows, make it into yogurt, and turn it into butter. Personally, since she thought that this child, Krishna, was going to go to the houses of neighborhood gopas and gopis to steal butter because he did not like the milk, and yogurt ordinarily prepared. So she wanted to make it top of the line first class so that Krishna would not uh, be mischievous and go breaking pots in other people's houses. While churning the butter, Mother Yashoda was singing about the childhood activities of Krishna. It was formerly a custom that if one wanted to remember something constantly, he would transform it into poetry or have this done by a professional poet. It appears that Mother Yashoda did not want to forget Krishna's activities at any time. Therefore, she poet poeticized all of Krishna's childhood activities, such as the killing of Putana, Agasura, Sakatasura, and Trinavarta. And while churning the butter, she sang about these activities in poetical form. <coughs> 
So generally, we don't think of Mother Yashoda as being a poet. But here we see that it was actually in the days of yore, it was quite common for Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis to be poets, uh, especially singing. And of course, it used to be about Krishna. Everything used to be about Krishna. There was no pop music in those days. Mm -chika -chika -chika, mm -chika -chika. Not, now, if you want that kind of stuff, you have to stay in a material world. Kali Yuga specifically, you know. So, uh, they used to compose beautiful poetry, beautiful, wonderful poetry. Uh, a few of those poems have survived through our Acharyas, also all, most of them poets, actually practically all of them poets. <laughs> Naratam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, Sad Goswami, practically they were all poets and writing prolifically, everything in verse. And uh, also the uh, Chaitanya Bhagwat in verse. It's commented there was a special type of verse that he was using. So this was formerly the practice in the days of yore, that classical music as such was not just for sense enjoyment, but classical music was all about Krishna. In fact, some of it has survived. We see today Bhartmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanatmanat
to hear Srila Prabhupada. And the sound of his voice is something very special. If you want to know what is the sound of the voice, Jaya Sri Radha If you want to know what is the sound of the voice of Srila Prabhupada and the residents of Braj, it is given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. That, you know, it is said that in the spiritual world, that Goloka Vrindavan, that all walk is dance. Nobody's just shuffling their feet, you know. All walk is dance, and all talk is song. Just like Mother Yashoda is singing here very nicely. And so, all talk is song. They're singing poetry. Imagine that. Everybody sitting here will eventually be, uh, not so long from now, a resident of Braj, and arriving in Vrindavan, we won't have to go to school, you know. When we arrive in Braj, we won't have to go to Gurukul to learn the uh, special language of Braj. Because as soon as we arrive in the spiritual world, doing, 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 spiritual knowledge, <coughs> spiritual body, there's no, <coughs> there's no passage of time like in the material world. So. Instantly upon arrival, we'll know, th we'll know the language, we'll know everything. No orientation is necessary. Although, we can get a hug from Krishna, like you've seen that famous painting of Krishna hugging that devotee that just came out of the material world. Very wonderful. That's the future. For those who want to get a hug from Krishna, it's available. Yes, it is. Actually, if somebody doubts that, should consider Prabhupada's statement. Krishna is ready. That's all he says. Krishna is ready. Then you have to use intelligence to complete the statement. Ready for what? Well, he's ready for the best, namely, to avoid, to, to award his lotus feet and to give you a hug if you want it. See, that's the thing. We have to want it. We have to want it. Our defect is we don't want these things strong enough. Maybe chota, a little bit, a little, a little, a little. No, no, we have to powerfully desire these things. Then we will get. Yes, Krishna will give uh, when we desire strongly enough. So, the practice of, all, of persons eager to remain in Krishna consciousness should be hearing and chanting about Krishna. Otherwise, <laughs> you can end up going to a disco bar like that. Fallen Brahmachari. So, um, eager, how long? 24 hours. 24 hours a day. This incident shows how Krishna consciousness Mother Shoda was. To stay in Krishna consciousness, we should follow such persons. Yes, we should follow the example of Mother Shoda. But at the same time, there was one Dizzy Dasi. Uh, one god sister decades ago. She was reading a nectar devotion. So she asked Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, uh, I'm a little confused because the nectar devotion says that we should meditate on a particular resident of Braj. Well, I like Mother Yashoda, I like the gopis, and then again, I like the coward boys also. So who should I meditate on? Which resident of Braj should I meditate on? Prabhupada, the Shingaguri said, I am that resident of Raj. Very well. Sometimes devotees doubt whether or not Prabhupada was actually Nityasiddha, whether he actually descended from Goloka Vrindavan or was he Sadhana Siddha? Did he wake his way up? Fools think that he worked his way up through Sadhana Siddha, household life and all that. No, no. Because one of the things Prabhupada said in his final years, uh, well, towards the end of his manifest pastimes, one of the things he told devotees was, I want to go back to, back. I want to go back to Goloka Vrindavan. That means he came from there. Hello? If he says, I want to go back to Goloka Vrindavan, that means he came from there. Why? Because they have nice kachuris there. Arivao. You probably know that Srila Prabhupada's father used to call him Kachuri Muki. 
you know, because he would li like to keep Couturier's stuff in his mouth, you know. So apparently this is an eternal pastime of Srila Prabhupada. And it doesn't matter whether he is, his uh, sarup or spiritual body is coward boy or guilty. Uh, but <coughs> I was discussing this with Madhavananda Prabhu, who is one of ISKCON's best pundits. And we get some hint about the capacity of Jiva. Fully liberated Jiva means residence of Braj. Put to shame yogis of the material world and what they can do. What can they do? Residents of Braj are extremely powerful in terms of mystic yoga. Do you realize that? In terms of mystic yoga, extremely powerful. So they can assume. There, I was looking for the letter, but I couldn't find it. Maybe some of you can find a letter to my god sister named Saradia in 1969. I was searching for it. Uh, I was searching for that letter. 1969 letter to Saradia. 1969, that's very early. So she was just a year and a half earlier, she was a hippie, you know. But now Prabhupada is writing to her on such a high subject matter because she asked him a very high question. Yes, she did. Though she was a new devotee, year and a half in those days was a new devotee. She asked Prabhupada, it's an amazing question for so-called Nephi to ask. Is Arjuna present in Goloka Vrindavan? Good question, huh? Is Arjuna present in Goloka Vrindavan? Just for fun, how many of you think Arjuna is present in Goloka Vrindavan? Not so many. So actually, Prabhupada wrote back to her. I couldn't find the letter. I was looking like anything for her. I spent an hour looking for the letter. I couldn't find it. 1969, Goss sister named Saradia, S-A-R-A-D-I-A. -A -A. It must be in the database. So Prabhupada wrote back and said, no, no, no. Arjuna is not in Goloka Vrindavan and the Pandavas and all that, what we used to call the road show. Rather, he, uh, uh, he is traveling from universe to universe. That's why we nicknamed him the road show. You know, like a Broadway show, you know, in the U.S., traveling from city to city. They play out in one city, then they move on to another city. So this is how Arjuna and the Pandavas and other such great, great uh, personalities are moving from universe to universe in their Nityalila. And they don't go back to Goloka Vrindavan. They don't know. They don't have to because they have got full satisfaction of Rama. In their Niti Ras, they're fully satisfied in their relationship they have God within the so-called material world because they're not in the material world. That's the point. They are in the spiritual world. It only appears to foolish persons that they are in the material world. You can't say... <coughs> you can't say that as Arjuna on a battle of Kukshetra was in the material world. Can you say that? No, you can't say that. Why? Because he was under influence of Lalini Shakti. Internal potency. Lila Shakti. Lila Shakti is the expansion of the Lord that deals with pastimes, that creates pastimes. In Braj, Lila Shakti is very active. There's a group of goddesses creating the pastimes of the Lord in Braj. That was uh, Brinda Devi is one. And uh, they are, with Lila Shakti, they are daily planning out at Brinda Kund, Brinda Devi's pond in Vrindava. And they sit down and they plan, they write the script for the pastimes of Radha and Krishna at Govardhan. Why? It's more fun that way. You might say, but Krishna's God, he knows everything. 
Yes, yes. He knows everything. But under Ladini Shakti, he's always under the spell of Yoga Maya. Always. I'll give you an example. There was a conversation between Krishna and Rukmini in the spiritual world. As Rukmini is <laughs> there in the spiritual world also. <coughs> Dorka is also in, in Goloka Vrindava, remember. Dorka is a section of Goloka Vrindava. So, um, she was talking with Krishna and she was saying there's one thing you don't know this is from Chaitanya Bhagavad there's one thing you don't know she says to Krishna Krishna says that's funny I, th <laughs> I thought I knew everything <laughs> he's God after all so he says I thought I knew everything he says, she says no there's only one thing that you don't know that is the power of your own lotus feet. Hare Ba! Come on, that was weak. Hare Ba! Shishi Radha Ki Jai! The power of his own lotus feet. He does not know, he did not know. He says, yes, you're right. Therefore, I shall descend. She, then she says, before, before Krishna says, I shall descend. She says, there's only one person who knows the glories, the full glories of your lotus feet. Really? Who's that? Shimati Radharani. Hariba! <laughs> she knows. Then Krishna says, yes, that's right. Therefore, I shall assume the mood of Radharani. Very soon, I shall descend into the material world, combine incarnation with Shimati Radharani as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and I will uh, then distribute the glories of the holy name. So, this is very wonderful. Then that's first news of Krishna's descent to the spiritual world. And Narada Muni, he was, he was dropped. <laughs> you know, because Krishna is a Paramatma. So, our, uh, Narada Muni was, he was dropping to this conversation, you know, listening he was listening from, hmm, okay, very good. So then Krishna saw him and said, So Narada, you go up to heavenly planets. Tell them all I'm going to descend very soon as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in my golden incarnation. You tell them all, and I will distribute the chanting the holy name of the Lord. And so, uh, so blissfully Narada went and told Lord Shiva, Lord Brahma, when he told Lord Shiva that Krishna was going to descend in his golden avatar form, <laughs> there was an unanticipated problem. You know, Lord Shiva is Nataraj, a famous dancer. But when he gets really, uh, you could say, carried away with dancing, then uh, the whole universe starts to shake. The universe is sitting on this plateau, you know. And so if Lord Shiva dances, it was rocking the whole universe up to the point Kormavatar at the bottom of the universe, you know. He stuck his head out saying, hey, <laughs> what's going on here? What's going on, you know? You see, it's Lord Shiva's dancing, you know. Because on the ecstasy on hearing about the advent of Krishna and Radharani as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Arriba. So then he was to go and tell all the other devas, yes, they must all descend with me to join in this lila. So actually another uh, story in this regarding this descent is that uh, Krishna and his coward boys were playing hide and go seek. And one coward boy was hiding in the cave and so then what, at, that, at that moment, Krishna decided to go with his friends. He decided to descend the material world as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So after a long time, this core boy who was in a cave, do you remember which one? Anybody remember which one? Srinam. Was it Srinam? He was in the cave 
Uh, and he realized, wait a minute, <laughs> something's wrong, this is taking too long. When he found out that they had all gone to the material world to join in Gora Lila and Nityananda Lila, <coughs> he was very upset. Very upset, you know, because they left it behind. They forgot it behind, you know. Anyways, this is Nitya Lila, this is Lila. So, uh, in this uh, material world, Mahama asked this question, so what was the mood of Srila Prabhupada before he started his preaching mission, remember? Mahama asked, asked that question. The mood of Srila Prabhupada before starting the preaching mission was Audarya Bhav, Audarya Bhav. There's two basic moods of Chaitanya Babu, Adarya Bhav and uh, his Prem Bhav, Madhurya Bhav. Adarya Bhav means the mood of distribution. So when you read in Chaitanya Dharita, you'll see that the uh, majority of Chaitanya Dharita through Madhya Lila is about Adarya Bhav. Like Mahaprabhu's tour of South India, he converted millions. I mean, we're doing nice preaching now, but we can't say yet that we're converting millions to Krishna consciousness. That day is coming. That day is coming. Maybe we won't be around, but that day is coming when millions will take up the chanting of Hare Krishna. Certainly, because Mahabhu is not dead and gone either. Mahabhu is alive in the incarnation of this movement. Prabhupada was asked, well, why, uh, why is it Krishna uh, doesn't Descend now, yada 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 dharmasya gana bhava dharma abhutanam adharmasya tadatmanam shudamaham. You know, bop, bam, you know, like the cartoons, you know. Bop, bam, you know. I like to, I like to think of uh, when Krishna is playing with her on X, like, tuk, 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 bop, bam, you know. Tui, his club goes flying, nobody could do that, you know. And then he looks at Lord Brahma and the Devas. He looks at Lord Brahma. Brahadev looks at Lord Brahma and the Devas. So, how do you like my style? Bop, bop, bop. How do you like my style? Unfortunately, Lord Brahma could not appreciate, just see, a glitch in his ras, just see. He could not appreciate. He said, no, no. Pray, dispatch him. Just kill him already. Stop playing with him. He said, stop playing with him. Oh, come on, you know. Come on, you know, don't tell the Supreme Personality God to stop playing with the demon. If he wants to play with the demon, Brothers of the Braj, hey, this is great, go for it, go for it. Just like the difference <coughs> between Lord Brahma and the coward boys. <coughs> when Krishna's killing a demon and the coward boys are watching, yeah, 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 go for it. Ah, and I'll give him a left, boom. Ah, give him a right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 Vinda. That's coward boys. Lord Brahma, pray, dispatch him. Stop playing with him. What is this nonsense, you know? Interfering with the Lord's pleasure. But out of compassion, all right. You want me to kill him, so I'll kill him, you know? But that's spoil sport, you know? That's no fun. But anyways, so uh, with the little bit of time that we have got left, uh, I want to describe a little bit about uh, Adarya Bhav is the basis of Prabhupada spreading his movement all over the world. Of course, it was given by Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, distributed his Krishna consciousness all over the world. I want you to print these books. Actually, Krishna told, Prabhupada was, another indication, Prabhupada was in the spiritual world, was in Galopa with the Krishna. There should not be any foolish speculation about this. Prabhupada told the devotees, I was in the spiritual world with Krishna. You want to be more specific than that? I was in the spiritual world with Krishna. Krishna said to me, I want you to go to the material world. Prabhupada said, but I don't want to go to material because they know what material world is all about. So then, I, but I don't want to go. Then Krishna said, but you have to go. Because I want you to write these books. Hariba! 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 
So no one should have even the slightest of doubt that Srila Prabhupada is the eternal resident of Raja and from Raja he descended this material world. Certainly. Haribo! So, uh, so then, um, there are uh, Adarya Bhav, a distribution. So, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he gave him the order, distribute his Krishna consciousness all over the world, at least in the West. But we see that Siddha Prabhupada didn't distribute just in the West. But by empowering his disciples and followers and grand disciples now and admirers and everybody, now Krishna consciousness spread east, west, up, down, everywhere, all over the world. One day maybe somebody will learn the Eskimo language and, and just translate Prabhupada's books into Eskimo, <laughs> you know. Anyways, the point is up, down, east, west, in all directions. Just like Indra Jimmy Swami, uh, I saw the video, very inspiring video of Indra Jimmy Swami on safari in uh, a, a, a row of jeeps in the summertime, not in the winter. Uh, snaking their way across the desert in Siberia. Those of you who don't know where Siberia is, it's the eastern portion of the former Soviet Union, uh, adjacent, to, adjacent to China. Very, very remote. It's on video. You look it up on uh, YouTube, Indijiva Swami tour of Siberia. It's very, very encouraging, very enlivening. And so they were, they, were just, they are just sheep herders there, you know. They aren't Brahmins, they aren't this thing or that thing. They're not Indian culture. Sheep herders in Siberia. And so they got uh, a pavilion to hold a program. And so on the video you see how the residents of Siberia, such a remote place, are enthusiastically chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. So this is a Darya Bhav. So after the order of, of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, <coughs> the next reason, the next foundation block for spreading this Krishna conscious movement all over the world is the mood of Chaitanya Babu at Benares. Benares. Benares today is a city of Shaivites and uh, Atheists, that is to say, followers of Shankaracharya. That's it, you know. Even today, uh, we have a small preaching center in Benares, you know. But uh, in, in the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there weren't any Vaishnavas there, in fact. So he knew that he was going to return to Benares, so he planted one of his devotees in Benares so he could stay there when he returned. So he came back, and when he returned, to Benares, he was in this Adarya Bhav mood distribution. Now listen carefully, this is very important. Because uh, Mahaprabhu said, I must have got this very heavy, heavy burden, like carrying a sack of 200 kilos. That's, that's pretty heavy, yeah. Supposing you're carrying a bag of weight, 200 kilos, cement or something like that. I have this very heavy load. I must distribute, I must unload this load. The next thing he said is the basis of Prabhupada's movement. Try to understand. I don't care, he said, if they are fit or unfitted candidates. Haribo. Come on. Haribo. Prabhupada did not care, fit or unfit. Hippies, former nudists in California, you know, some, at least one, General, you know, out of the nudists from nudists from uh, uh, Morningstar Ranch in California, Prabhupada went there. <coughs> Nobody else would do that. <coughs> they were running. I went there as a karmi before I became a devotee. I went there as a karmi. It was so dirty and unclean. Pigs running around, dogs running around, chickens running around. Apparently, they were not all vegetarian. There were chickens running around. Prabhupada created a general <coughs> out of that crowd of nudists. I wasn't even attracted by the fact that there were nude walk, women walking around. They were so dirty, you know. Everything was so filthy dirty, you know. They were living just like pigs. Bah! 
created, probably created a great general, and some uh, lieutenants also out of that. Vishnu Joswami came from there. Mahadisa came from there. Yes, from that Morning Star Lodge. But Krishna saved you from moving to that place. So he created a great army out of low grade people. That's Prabhupada's. And we have to understand that point. What Prabhupada is still doing. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit in the remaining time about my personal experiences in book distribution. I promised Vijay I would tell him some things that he hasn't heard before. He's heard it all, been around forever. But he hasn't heard it all. He hasn't heard my personal experiences. First, I'll, t uh, I'll tell you uh, that I was in Calcutta, oh, how about five years ago? And I was invited to be a featured speaker at a Bhakta Viksha rally of about 800 congregation members. You know, it's a lot of devotees. If you look at the daily book distribution core, uh, scores for Calcutta, um, <laughs> not very impressive. <laughs> I sit there on, on regular weekdays and hear their book distribution scores are not very impressive, you know. There are just a few books here and there. But somehow or other, I got some inspiration. Krishna gave me, Psst, hey, you know how, why don't you share with them your book distribution ideas? Okay, okay. So, uh, so I got some inspiration to sell sets of Shima Bhagavatam. Vijay, please pass this on to Vaisheshika. Uh, Even he will be shocked to hear. What I did in half an hour, and I'll explain to you how I did it. So, uh, sets, now not just one at a time, sets, full sets of Srimad Bhagavatam. So I just started saying, why read trash novels, junky, worthless, paperback rubbish, only will de dive you deeper into material essence? Why not find out some real interesting things that are coming from the Srimad Bhagavatam? <laughs> <coughs> For example, I said, if you want to learn about the private sex life of Lord Shiva, read Shima Bhagavatam. <laughs> no, no, I said this in front of 800 people. I said it in front of 800 people. It's a fact. It's a fa if you want to learn about the private sex life of Lord Shiva, read Shima Bhagavatam. It's there. I'm not making this up. Right, Vijay? Not making it up. I, can't, I don't remember exactly which canto, but so then uh, shocking but then I said and if you want to learn about the private mer of love affairs of great saints great kings read Shima Bhagavatam if you want to hear about <coughs> how Lord Shiva <coughs> assumed the form of a beautiful woman and become very agitated chasing after her her clothes are falling off read Shima Bhagavatam she said, well, Maharaj, that's kind of radical. Yeah, but guess what? It worked. That day, in half an hour, I took pledges for 30 sets of Shema Bhagavatam. 30 sets. <laughs> Pass it on, Vijay. It's maybe a little tough for some people to swallow, but it worked. I took pledges, for, and the devotees weren't ready. I hadn't told them. I said, <coughs> Quickly run around and write down the phone numbers and names of the people who have made the pledges. Because I didn't have I didn't even have a set of Bhagavatams with me to show off. I was just spontaneously uh, offering the opportunity. One man in the crowd became so fired up he he jumped up. He said, "I will put 500 rupees towards anybody that makes a pledge for a set of Bhagavatams today." Hare Ba. You can do better than that. Hariva! <coughs> <coughs> so he was put up 500 rupees for anybody to take a pledge that day for a full set of Shimbaog Tops. So 30 sets, 30 sets. Now, uh, in the, in the Vaishya uh video for 
the marathon, he gives a talk about book distribution. At the end, he says, and so now that you're ready, fired up, hit the pavement. Of course, outside of America, a lot of people wouldn't know what that means. That means get out on the streets and distribute books, you know. So those that go out on book distribution know that it's very difficult. Book distribution is heavy deposit, stop lights in this place and that place. But a uh, little known fact is that it's easier to distribute cases of Bhagavad Gita than, than to distribute five books. Fact. Now you say, Maharaj, come on, you know. But it is. There's, thir there's 30 Bhagavad Gitas in one case. So in India, I give cultural pitch. I don't talk about Krishna. I talk about, you have to save the culture of India before it's too late. Culture and heritage, it's your heritage. Your heritage. I call it spiritual nationalism. Indians like it. This is the greatest culture on the planet. It's not America, folks. Any Americans here, uh, you know, you'll have to be disappointed. America and UK, not the greatest culture of the world. India still has the greatest culture on the world. <coughs> So that's preaching like that. <coughs> <coughs> so then, I went to the home of uh, uh, one man. There was about 30, 30 guests there. Got a little time yet. There were about 30 guests at a home party. I was asked to give the talk during the marathon. So that was my talk. They were all Indians. They were all devotees. So I said, you have to save this great heritage before it's too late. So then, okay, who will take 10 cases? I didn't start at one case. Who will take 10 cases? Well, I got some tickers. That day, I took pledges for 30 cases. You got that, Vijay? 30 cases of, of Bhagavad Gita in half an hour. Excuse me, but you can't really do that in the streets. That's 900 Bhagavad Gitas in half an hour. Not bad. Haribo! Haribo! It's true. 900 Bhagavad Gitas in half an hour. So uh, you can learn this. Home programs are hot. And home programs, it's easier to distribute. Just like in, in the U.S., other places. They have Tupperware parties. Tupperware is a type of household utensils, uh, dishes, pans, all kinds of things that for uh, housewares. And so some uh, lady calls together her friends, relatives, and, and all her contacts. They come to her house. They know it's a Tupperware party, but they go anyways. So everybody's expected to buy something. They go there. And it's a multi-billion dollar business. Very successful. It's international centered out of the United States. Very successful, very direct sales, they call it. So they go there and they buy something. So the same thing can be done with uh, Shema Bhagavatam. Home party is based around Shema Bhagavatam. Why not? Prasad, Shema Bhagavatam, Kirtan, how can you go wrong, you see? <coughs> so, <coughs> this is the future for spreading Krishna consciousness. Actually, in the future, uh, at, at the Kirtan Mela, uh, that devotee who's uh, with the Mayapur, the Mayapur, one of the Mayapur, top Mayapur singers, he declared one day we'll fill up the stadiums with 50,000 people. Yes, that's not a pipe, pipe dream. You know, pipe dream means smoking hashish. You sit down, you know, and then you have some hallucination. It's called a pipe dream. That we will one day fill a stadium with 50,000 people chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Rama, Rama. That's the reality. It's not a pipe dream. Some of you younger people may be able to see it. I'll be gone. I will have gone back to Godhead. I'll be with Prabhupada and my God brothers and God sisters there. You know, Prabhupada said there will be a new ISKCON 
another ISKCON in a spiritual world. In Golagur Buddha, there'll be another ISKCON. Family reunion. Because we're full of knowledge, we'll know everybody, oh wow, you made it too, that's great. But by, by uh, <coughs> Prabhupada dragging, Prabhupada dragging all the devotees back to Godhead. Uh, you can only get in with an invitation from a Nityasiddha devotee, otherwise you can't get into Goloka Vrindava. Brahma Samhita describes, if any yogis, let's say Durvasa or other powerful yogis, try to get into Goloka Vrindava, there are guards with extremely sharp tridents around the corners of Goloka Vrindava. You try to get in, chindi bindi, chopped to pieces. Yogis, bogies, rogis, they can't get in. Only pure devotee, only if you have a, 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 a pass from a pure devotee. It's like this. Picture a very uh, uh, high class <coughs> country club. There must be some in Calcutta, or in, certainly in uh, Delhi there. Very high class, very exclusive where politicians are mingling with judges and so forth and so on, movie stars and whatever. So, uh, certainly in Mumbai also they would have movie stars, politicians, all mingling together in a very, very exclusive club. You can't get in. Even if you go there dressed in ordinary clothes, you can't get in. Where's your pass? Sorry, I don't have one. Okay, you can't come in. But, this picture of Goloka Vrindavan is a very exclusive club. It is. Not everybody can get in. Only by invitation. Think about it. That's Prabhupada. Try to understand. Shri Prabhupada ki jai. <laughs> Exclusive in invitation to enter into Goloka Vrindavan. So, when Prabhupada comes to entrance, he goes back and forth, you know. Prabhupada comes to Goloka Vrindavan. No necessity to show a pass. Good morning, sir. Understand? That's Prabhupada, you know. If if there are some devotees with Prabhupada, Prabhupada says, they're with me. Okay, sir, no problem. You see? That's Prabhupada trying to understand whether you're a second day generation, third, fourth, fifth generation, and it doesn't matter. I have to tell you a quick, I know I'm going to wind it up, but this is too juicy. That uh, there's a lot of juicy things, but I won't get a chance to tell you. But there was a one woman in uh, Juhu and uh, she, uh, she she died so she was a devotee so uh, her sister from South India came uh, for the funeral rites you know so then uh, her sister saw Prabhupada sitting on the Vyasa sign. She exclaims loudly, I saw that man! I saw that man! He came to me in a dream! Yes, Prabhupada appears in dreams. He said, don't worry about your sister now. She's under my protection. Haribo! Haribo! That's Prabhupada. Also, one of my, one of my god brothers he dedicated his youthful life to, to helping to build this great movement. And later on, you know, like so many, he drifted away from his gone. He uh, got himself married. And then his marriage failed. Unfortunately, the percentage of failing devotee marriage is quite high. And then he, uh, so he, he got a, himself a karmi girlfriend. Then he married her. He realized that was the right thing to do. So he married his Kirby girlfriend, and then he had a couple of children with her. So then, uh, so then, uh, he got terminal cancer. He's in the intensive care. He's dying. There's no question of his coming back. He was dying. He's in intensive care in the in the hospital, and uh, so he's leaving, leaving, about to leave unconscious, you know, blackout. So then, <coughs> all of a sudden, without warning, he was out cold, you know. <coughs> he was <coughs> in uh, 
coma, coma, out cold. But all of a sudden his eyes opened wide. Suddenly his eyes opened wide and he exclaimed, Srila Prabhupada, boom! And he left. Meditating on Prabhupada. Prabhupada came to get him. Prabhupada overlooked the fact that he'd been in the material energy for a few years. He overlooked it. He remembered the sacrifice of his youth that he gave to help build this great movement that you're all enjoying right now. Young people, it wasn't built by middle-aged people. There was nobody over 25 years old. Really there wasn't. If somebody was 30 years old, they'd be considered antique. Grandma or grandpa. So there's more lecture things to say, but I'm out of time. So please uh, give me all your blessings that I can carry on nicely in Krishna consciousness without a problem. It's difficult when you're old. Jagat Guru Siddhapapa Gai Jai. Kalatara Shiva Bhagavad Gai Jai. If you have any questions, you can approach me. Comments also. Thank you.